Hello and welcome back. Uh, here we're looking at a uh, financial application of the bivariate distribution and covariance. Uh, we're going to look at how we can help manage risk when we diversify our financial portfolio. So here's, uh, here's our example. We're talking to our parents. They want to construct an investment portfolio and they've come to us looking for help. Uh, two stocks are being considered that the expected value of the first. So here we have the average return on that first stock is 4.1% per year with a variance of 1.2. The expected value of the second stock is 9.4, the variance 36. And we have a covariance between these two stocks are negative three. So they tend to move in opposite directions. As, as one is going up in value, the other tends to be going down in value. So. What, uh, which of these two stocks is a riskier investment? Well, when we're talking about risk in financial markets, we're talking about volatility. When we're talking about volatility, we're talking about variability. And of course, variability, it sounds an awful lot like variance. So when we're looking at financial products, any of those financial products that have a higher variance, uh, that means that there's greater variability and that means there's greater risk. So something with a high variance, the, the the return, the annual return, sometimes might be much higher than the, the average, sometimes it might be much lower than the average. And so the fact that there's that much volatility uh, implies that it's a riskier, a riskier investment. So comparing these two, I have uh, the variance of X is 1.2, the variance of Y is 36. We can also calculate the standard deviations of these two, and that can also be used as a measure of risk. Uh, they're directly related to one another because the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So if the variance is higher, the standard deviation is going to be higher as well. So if I look at the standard deviation of x, I have, let's call that 1.1. And if I look at the standard deviation of y, oh, 36 is just going to be 6. So again, standard deviation of y is higher. So it's a more risky uh, investment. So Y is riskier. B, what is the expected return on standard deviation in dollars for an investment of $500 uh, in the first stock? So in that first stock, our expected rate of return is 4.1% uh, is our annual uh, rates of return. So that means for every $100, Every hundred dollars that I invest in that stock will earn me 4.1%, so that's four dollars and ten cents. So in order to figure out what it would be for five hundred dollars, I just multiply that by five. Five times four point one, and that gives me an average or an expected return of twenty dollars and fifty cents. Uh, and what is the standard deviation for that $500 investment? Well, that would be a very similar calculation. Five uh, times my standard deviation, which here I've already calculated 1.1. And so that's $5.50. So my expected return uh, is $20.50 with a standard deviation of $5.50 and 50 cents. That five looks like a three for some reason. Okay, part C. What is the expected return and standard deviation for an investment of 50% in each stock? So it's going to be a little bit tedious here. The, the expected value is simple enough. So if I have, let's just use general notation here. So uh, A times X and B times X. So A and B represent the shares. Then this expected value is just A times the expected value of X and B times the expected value of Y. So in the case of this uh, of this example, I'm looking at the expected value of 50% of X and 50% of Y. So this would just be 50 or 0.5 times the expected value of x is 4.1 plus 0.5 times the expected value of y, 9.4. And so here we have 
0.5 times 4.1 plus 0.5 times 9.4. So I would get an average return of 6. Point, oops, 6.75. So 6.75 would be my expected return on 50-50 investment. Uh, standard deviation. So the variance, if I use the same notation, the variance of AX plus BY, where A and B represent the shares uh, of, of each of these two stocks, this would be a squared times the variance of x plus b squared times the variance of y plus 2 times a b uh, times the covariance of x and y. So a little bit more of a tedious calculation. But we've got all of our numbers, so we can just plug them in. So this is 50%, so still 0.5 variance of x is 1.2 and this is 50 50 so this is 0.5 variance of y was 36 plus 2 times 0.5 times 0.5 and the covariance we have here is minus 3 so let's uh, plug those into our calculator uh, oh I made a mistake that I'm sure you all saw these 0.5 should be squared. Now let's plug that into our calculator. 0.5 squared times 1.2 plus 0.5 squared times 36 plus 2 times 0.5 times 0.5 times negative 3 equals 7.8. 7.8, so that's my variance, but what we want is the standard deviation of 0.5x and 0.5y. So that's going to be the square root of that variance, square root of 7.8. So call that 2.79, I guess, 2.79. So, by diversifying our portfolio 50-50 between these two stocks, I get a rate of return that is a little better than uh, the lowest, not quite as good as the highest, but it also manages that risk a little bit. So I'm getting a higher return than I would if I were all in that lowest return stock. And my risk, my standard deviation here is substantially less, down to 2.79%. Uh, so, by diversifying, get a little better return uh, and a, a little bit less of a risk. Now let's go through uh, part D. What is the expected return? Same thing as part C, but now 75% in the first stock, 25% in the second stock. So let's go through, I'll leave all of the formulas here, but I'll just erase the numbers. So there's this one and this one will we do. Okay, so now, that's a uh, different color. So now this is going to be expected value of 0.75 in X and 0.25 in Y. So A is 0.75 times 4.1 plus 0.25 times 9.4. So now we're going to have a little bit of a lower return because we're a little bit more risk averse, apparently, if we're considering a larger share in the lower return asset. 0.41, oops, I made a mistake. 0.75 times 4.1 plus 0.25 times, oh, something is wrong here. Let me start over. Clear, clear, clear. 0 0.75 times 4.1 plus 0.25 times 9.4. There we go, 5.425. So 5.425 is my expected return. 
So a little bit less than what we saw in part C because now we're more heavily weighted uh, into the safer, the safer asset. So now if we go through our calculation for the variance and standard deviation, again, this is 0.75x and 0.25y. So 0.75 squared times the variance of x plus 0.25 squared times variance of y plus 2 times 0.75 times 0.25 times negative 3 for that covariance. And here now we see 0.75 squared times 1.2 plus 0.25 squared times 36 plus 2 times 0.75 times 0.25 times negative 3 equals 1.8 is our variance. So now we want the standard deviation. This is 75x and 25y. So that standard deviation is the square root of 1.8, so 1.34. One point three four percent is our standard deviation. Oh, oh, that should be yeah, that's okay. Good. So we have uh, lower return. We have lower risk. That makes sense. We're more heavily invested uh, in our safer asset. So no surprises here. Uh, part E. Compute the correlation coefficient between the returns of these two stocks. So that correlation coefficient. Uh, let's just call it a correlation coefficient. This is the covariance divided by the product of the two standard deviations, so sigma x and sigma y. So this is, we have negative 3, and here we calculated those standard deviations, 1.1 times 6. So here we're going to go <coughs> negative 3 divided by 1.1 times 6. So we have a value 0.45, negative 0.45. So we have a negative relationship, fairly strong negative relationship between our two stocks. As one is increasing in value, the other one tends to be decreasing in value. So there we have it. One application of uh, this bivariate distribution and covariance um, calculations that we've been looking at in uh, managing portfolio, uh, financial portfolio diversification. Good. I hope this was useful. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.